If you look out toward uh, 2012, uh, it's totally dominated by hard disk drives. Uh, there's a, a very, very small, thin area that uh, will be uh, uh, served by solid state. When you get out into the 2020 time frame, I I truly believe that, that hard disk drives will still be around, but I think that over time, um, solid state will eventually come in and, and continue to displace some areas of, of, um, of storage. And I think the key to all of that is whether or not the new technologies that, gets, that get adopted for hard disk drives and solid state can be brought to market um, at a reasonable cost. The, uh, the cost of, of moving the technology forward in hard disk drives is now, well not now, but next year and the year after going, we're going to see a, a significant change where we will adopt semiconductor processing technologies that uh, will rely on, uh, or that will enable the patterning of the disk surface to enable higher storage capacities. The goal is to continue to increase storage density on the surface of a disk by 40% per year, compounded annual growth rate per year. If we can do that as an industry, then it'll, it'll keep that amount of storage being displaced by semiconductor or flash and um, as a pretty thin line. But the cost of implementing that type of uh, semiconductor processing into a disk or onto a disk and into a disk drive is very high. It's estimated that it will probably cost uh, at the beginning maybe two and a half dollars additional per disk or per one disk drive. Um, and that will come down very likely to be somewhere as you know, close to being a dollar adder. A dollar is a lot of money and you know, with, with the kinds of volumes that these companies make and the cost of implementing that technology is going to be very, very expensive. Likewise for semiconductor or NAND type storage, you know, solid state drive storage, it also has to rely on significant changes to the semiconductor processing techniques, technology. Uh, you hear about, um, about uh, uh, the, the size of the node. Uh, today we're around a 45 to 50 nanometer size going down to you know, 32 and 22 nanometers. It's really expensive to do that as well. My personal feeling is that the technology that disk drive uses and the technology that solid state drives use will converge and that same technology will enable both. In the case of hard disk drives, hard disk drive technologists want to use that technology sooner than the semiconductor industry roadmap will allow. So in one case you've got the Flash, NAND, solid state guys saying that, hey, we're going to follow the semiconductor industry roadmap. Uh, our features are pretty easy to make. And in that case, you've got the entire semicon semiconductor industry amortizing the cost of those advanced technologies. In the case of hard drives, it could also utilize that same technology, but not as fast as we would really like to because it doesn't have the entire semiconductor industry helping it. It will eventually, as long as hard drives follow the semiconductor roadmap. So it is a challenge. But whenever the disk drive people or the disk technologists have encountered uh, significant technology hurdles like that, they have found a way to extend existing technology. So today's perpendicular technology if you were here two or three years ago, the estimate was uh, you really can't get above 400 to 500 gigabits per square inch. Today we're shipping 400 gigabits per square inch and that limit has been pushed out to about a terabit per square inch or a thousand gigabits per square inch. My personal feeling is we will find a way to continue to extend current technology to a time when these new semiconductor technologies can be brought in to enable the disk drives 
to continue to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 40 percent. That seems to be magic in terms of enabling disk drives to keep solid state drives at bay.